Good morning Year 6 and welcome to Monday's reading lesson. I will be teaching your reading this week and I'm very excited because I love Stormbreaker. It's such a fantastic book. Now I just want to remind you at the beginning of the week that RED is still possible for you to achieve even if you're at home. I know that last week a couple of children sent in pictures of their RED booklets that they had actually managed to fill in because they'd been reading every day. That means that we can award you five dojos for reading every day. Now don't worry if you've lost your RED booklet, you could always make your own at home, you can create your own RED or just you know write down in a list how many days you've been reading at home and then you can take a picture, send it into the year six email address and we can give you your five RED dojo points for reading every day. Okay, so that was just a quick reminder. Let's get on with the lesson. You are going to begin the lesson today with a Kahoot quiz to recap everything that you've learned so far in Stormbreaker. Um, the game pin is on the screen and I would just like to remind you that when you have the opportunity to put in your nickname, you need to put in your first name and the first letter of your surname. That'll just mean it will be easier for me to, to award you dojo points if you achieve a high score on the quiz. So that will be open until five o'clock today for you to have a go at. Moving on to today's LO then, it is to retrieve and record information. So to start off, you're going to predict what this means. Now this is the name of chapter seven, Fissalia Fissilis. What could this mean? What do you think Fissalia Fissilis has to do with chapter seven? I would like you to write down your prediction and then you can come back to it once we find out what it is. OK, here are some tricky words that we will be coming across at the beginning of this chapter. So the first one is a complex. So this can be used as, as an adjective, but in this chapter it occurs as a noun. And it means a building that has lots of connected parts. The next one is chauffeur. Now you might know that this is a French word. It's a noun and it means a person who is employed to drive a private car. So it's somebody whose job is to drive people to their destination. Then we've got an operative, which is also a noun. And it's a synonym for an agent or a worker, okay? Also a synonym for a spy. And claustrophobic is an adjective and it describes some, um, the state of being afraid of enclosed spaces, okay? So it might be um, some people are afraid of being in lifts because they're quite closed in spaces. So I'd like you to have a go at saying these words with me. Complex, chauffeur operative, claustrophobic, then can you shout these words? Complex, chauffeur, operative, claustrophobic, and then can you whisper them? Complex, chauffeur, operative, claustrophobic, and then clap them. Complex, chauffeur, operative, claustrophobic. And then if you'd like to have a go at acting those words, you can do that as well. Let's take a look at a couple more words in a bit, bit more detail then. So what is the root word in the word unsmiling? Yes, so you might have spotted that this word has the un prefix at the beginning. So smile is the root word. If you're unsmiling, it means that you're not smiling, um, that you're quite sad or serious. And then what spelling rule can you see in the word according? Yes, yeah, so it's the ACC at the beginning of the word. You looked at that last week with Mrs. Muddyman in your spelling and handwriting. So that's a good little bit of revision for you. Right, back to today's LO then. Now, what does retrieve actually mean? Well, it means to locate 
or to find information to help answer questions. So if you're in my class, if you're in 6R, you'll know that I'm always telling you stories about Shelby. Now Shelby is a golden retriever, which means that he likes to go and fetch things. So you can see in this picture here, he loves his ball and no matter where it is, he'll go there and he'll retrieve it. He'll go and get it and bring it back. So I like to talk about him whenever um, we talk about retrieval because it's sort of what you need to do when you're reading um, through the text. You need to look, you need to search, you need to find the information and then bring it back and write it in your answer. It's not just his orange ball that he loves though. He also likes retrieving things from around the house. You can see he's got his turkey teddy here that he absolutely loves. So as much as I could sit here and look at pictures of Shelby all day, we be better get back to the lesson. Now we've recapped what the objective means. Well, can you remember what your steps to success are for answering retrieval questions? Well done if you said, skimming and scanning. Those are key for finding those answers. So I'm going to show you now how I would go about answering one of these retrieval questions. So I'll start by reading the beginning of the chapter. The silver grey Mercedes SL600 cruised down the motorway travelling south. Alex was sitting in the front passenger seat with so much soft leather around him that he could barely hear the 389 horsepower 6 litre engine that was carrying him towards the Sile complex near Port Allen, Cornwall. But at 80 miles per hour, the engine was only idling. Alex could feel the power of the car. £100,000 worth of German engineering, one touch from the thin, unsmiling chauffeur, and the Mercedes would leap forward. This was a car that sneered at speed limits. OK, so the question is, according to the text, how quickly was the car travelling? So if I think about the different speeds that a car can travel, well, usually that's described using a number, isn't it? So perhaps I could scan four digits in the text or words for different numbers. So I can see SL600. Well, it can't be that because that's the make of the car. Um, 389 horsepower. No, that's six litre engine. No, that's the specifics of the car again. Ah, 80, but at 80 miles per hour. Yeah, so that describes how quickly the, tra the car was travelling. OK, chilly ones, it's your turn now. Before you answer the questions, I will read on the next section of the text. Alex had been collected that morning from a converted church in Hampstead near North London. This was where Felix Lester lived. When the driver had arrived, Alex had been waiting with his luggage and there had even been a woman, an MI6 operative, kissing him, telling him to clean his teeth, waving goodbye. As far as the driver was concerned, Alex was Felix. That morning, Alex had read through the file and knew that Lester went to a school called St Anthony's, had two sisters and a pet Labrador. His father was an architect. His mother designed jewellery. A happy family. His family, if anybody asked. How far is it to Port Talon? he asked. So far, the driver had barely spoken a word. He answered Alex without looking at him. A few hours. You want some music? Got any John Lennon? That wasn't his choice. So, Chili 1, here are your questions to start with. Now, if you are answering Chili 2 and Chili 3 questions, like we would in class, I would also like you to answer the Chili 1 questions as well. So, according to the text, where did Felix go to school? And question two, according to the text, what jobs do Felix's parents do? So feel free to go back in the video to the zoomed in section of the text to find the answers. Don't forget those steps to success. You need to use your skimming and scanning skills. 
Okay, let's check the answers then. So according to the text, Felix went to St Anthony's school. And the jobs that Felix's parents do are his dad is an architect and his mum is a jewellery designer. So it's back to my turn now. Um, but before I show you the my turn question, I'll read on to the next section of the text. According to the file, Felix Lester like John Lennon. No, oh, forget it. I'll get some sleep. He needed the sleep. He was still exhausted from the training and wondered how he would explain all the half healed cuts and bruises if anyone saw under his shirt. Maybe he'd tell them he got bullied at school. He closed his eyes and allowed the leather to suck him into sleep. It was the feeling of the car slowing down that woke him. He opened his eyes and saw a fishing village, the blue sea beyond, a swathe of rolling green hills and a cloudless sky. The focus for this question is a true or false question. Alex loved listening to John Lennon. So I'm going to scan for John Lennon. Now I remember seeing this in the text and because I've got a proper noun, I can scan for names and words with capital letters. Ah, there we go, found it there. John Lennon. That wasn't his choice. According to the file, Felix Lester liked John Lennon. So that is false because Alex doesn't like John Lennon, Felix Lester does. So Chile 2 and Chile 3s, it's your turn to have a go at one of these questions now. But again, before you do so, I will read on. It was a picture of a jigsaw puzzle or perhaps a holiday brochure advertising a forgotten England. Seagulls swooped and cried overhead. An old tug, tangled nets, smoke and flaking paint pulled into the quay. A few locals, fishermen and their wives, stood around watching. It was about five o'clock in the afternoon and the village was caught in the silvery, fragile light that comes at the end of a perfect spring day. Here are your questions then. One, true or false, Alex liked the picture of the village on the jigsaw puzzle. And two, Alex arrived at Port Talon in the early evening. Welcome back Year 6. Shall we reveal the answers? So number one was false. A metaphor was used here to describe the village. So he wasn't actually looking at a jigsaw puzzle. The author is saying that the village is so picturesque it looks like a picture of a jigsaw puzzle. So they've used a metaphor. And then question two was true because he did arrive at five o'clock. Okay, one more my turn then. Again, I will read on before introducing the question. Oh, Talon, the driver said. You must have noticed Alex opening his eyes. It's pretty. Not if you're a fish. They drove round the edge of the village and back inland down a lane that twisted between strangely bumpy fields. Alex saw the ruins of buildings, half crumbling chimneys and rusting metal wheels and knew that he was looking at an old tin mine. They'd mined tin in Cornwall for 3,000 years until one day the tin had run out. Now all that was left were the holes. A couple of kilometres down the lane, a linked metal fence sprang up. It was brand new. 10 metres high, topped with razor wire. Arc lamps on scaffolding towers stood at regular intervals and there were huge signs, red on white. Here is my question then. Write three things you are told about the condition of the buildings. Important word in the question here is the condition of the buildings. So what state are they in? So if I scan and skim the text, so Ah, he saw the ruins of buildings, half crumbling chimneys, rusting metal wheels, 
and he knew that he was looking at an old tin mine. So that gives me my three things I'm told about the, the condition of the buildings. So one, they were ruins. Um, number two, it was dilapidated, so the buildings were falling apart, half crumbling chimneys and rusting metal wheels, and they were old, so it describes an old tin mine. So Tilly 3 it is your turn now to have a go. I will read the extract and then you can have a go at the questions. Trespassers will be shot, Alex muttered to himself. He remembered what Mrs Jones had told him. He's more or less got his own private army. He's acting as if he's got something to hide. Well, that was certainly his own first impression. The whole complex was somehow shocking, alien to the sloping hills and fields. The car reached the main gate, where there was a security cabin and an electronic barrier. A guard in a blue and grey uniform with SE printed on his jacket waved them through. The barrier lifted automatically, and then they were following a long, straight road over a stretch of land that had somehow been hammered flat, with an airstrip on one side and a cluster of four high-tech buildings on the other. The buildings were large, smoked glass and steel, each one joined to the next by a covered walkway. There were two aircrafts next to the landing strip, a helicopter and a small cargo plane. Alex was impressed. The whole complex must have been about five kilometres square. It was quite an operation. The Mercedes came to a roundabout with a fountain at the centre, swept round it and continued up towards a fantastic sprawling house. It was Victorian, red brick topped with copper drums, domes and spires that had long ago turned green. There must have been at least 60 windows on the five floors facing the drive. It was a house that just didn't know when to stop. So here is your question, Tilly Threes. Write three things you were told about the complex. Should we go through the answers then, Tilly Three? Okay, get ready. So one, there were several buildings which were joined to the next by a covered walkway. It was large, so it was five kilometres square. And there was a huge Victorian style house there with at least 60 windows. Well done for reaching the end of the lesson and completing your chilly challenges. So I'm going to read on a little bit. <clears throat> so I'll cover the next few pages and then we'll carry on with our questions tomorrow. The Mercedes pulled up at the main entrance and the driver got out. Follow me. What about my luggage? Alex asked. It'll be brought. Alex and the driver went through the front door and into a hall dominated by a huge canvas. Judgment Day, the end of the world, painted four centuries ago as a swirling mass of doomed souls and demons. There were works of art everywhere. Watercolours and oils, prints, drawings, sculptures in stone and bronze, all crowded together with no way for the eye to rest. Alex followed the driver along a carpet so thick that he almost bounced. He was beginning to feel claustrophobic and was relieved when they passed through a door and into a vast room that was practically bare. Mr Sile will be here shortly, the driver said, and left. Alex looked around him. This was a modern room with a curving steel desk near the centre. Carefully positioned halogen lights and a spiral staircase leading down from a perfect circle cut in the ceiling high above. One entire wall consisted of a single sheet of glass and, walking over to it, Alex realised that he was looking at a gigantic aquarium. The sheer size of the thing drew him towards it. It was hard to imagine how many thousands of litres of water the glass held back, but he was surprised to see that the tank was empty. There were no fish, although it was big enough to hold a shark. And then something moved in the turquoise shadows and Alex gasped with a mixture of horror and wonderment as the biggest jellyfish he had ever seen drifted into view. The main body of the creature was a shimmering, pulsating mass of white and mauve, shaped roughly like a cone. 
Beneath it, a mass of tentacles covered with circular stingers twisted in the water, at least 10 metres long. As the jellyfish moved or drifted in an artificial current, its tentacles writhed against the glass so that it looked almost as if it was trying to break out. It was the single most awesome and repulsive thing Alex had ever seen. Fissalia Fissilis. The voice came from behind him and Alex twisted round to see a man coming down the last of the stairs. Okay, I'll see you again tomorrow, year six.